Okay, good morning. This is Kristen Rodman, Director of Talent Programs for the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much for joining us today for our weekly webinar series with our training partner, Illinois Biz. Today we'll touch on what I'm sure is a relevant topic for many right now, managing stress. As we continue to deal with the impact of COVID-19 in both our personal and professional lives, stress is most likely unavoidable. Today we'll learn how to better understand stress and techniques for how to identify and relieve stressful situations. For those of you who are joining via Zoom, you can submit a question in writing at any point during the webinar using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. We have time at the end and we'll get to as many questions as possible. We will also make a recording of this and every webinar in this series available for streaming online at our website, chicagolandchamber.org. Now let's get started. It's my pleasure to turn things over to Francine Pillman, Senior Consultant with Illinois Biz, who will lead us through the discussion on stress management. Francine? Thank you, Kristen. Good morning. As Kristen said, I am Francine Pellman, a senior consultant with Illinois Biz. In times like these, living and thriving during a pandemic, I'm happy to talk about stress management. Next slide, please. Today, we're going to discuss common stressors in the workplace, the stress response cycle, stress personalities, and stress management techniques that can be used in the workplace. Next slide, please. Stress is a fact of life and it is unavoidable. We have stress at home, we have stress at work. According to Comsec in 2019, 61% of employees said they were under high stress and experiencing extreme fatigue. At least 53% of employees have missed one day of work due to stress. And 47% of employees have missed three or more days because of stress. So yes, employees are under stress and it is impacting our business. According to researchers, stress in the workplace is costing American companies more than $300 billion a year. That's in healthcare costs, absenteeism, and poor performance. Stress is defined as the mind and body response to environmental demands or pressures. Next slide, please. According to ComPsych, there were four major stressors in the workplace. Workload was the number one stressor at work. That's understandable as organizations have become flatter. Many times as the number of people decrease in organizations, the work was just distributed to the remaining employees. This meant that employees were working harder and getting stressed out. At Illinois Biz, we partner with our clients to introduce link thinking. We work with employees to identify and streamline their workflows. This achieves many benefits higher quality, increased productivity, less stress, and better customer outcomes. Everyone wins when the workload is manageable. The second major stressor in the workplace was people issues. In my work at Illinois Biz, employees describe people issues as toxic manager and coworkers, the lack of clear priorities for management, and the lack of accountability. To address these issues, we have partnered with our clients to build foundational skills such as respectful communication, effective conflict resolution, and problem solving. Building these skills in the organization changes the culture. The leaders are responsible for modeling the appropriate behaviors and holding everyone accountable for following their lead. The third major stressor at work was work-life balance. Work -life balance. Many employees are juggling a heavy workload while caring for children and elderly parents. Flexible work schedules and the ability to work from home can help employees achieve the right work-life balance to reduce stress. The fourth issue was job security. Most employers cannot guarantee job security. However, an employer can assure employees that they will invest in their skill set so that they have the correct skills necessary for today's marketplace. As workplaces are rapidly changing, Illinois Biz has partnered with clients to upskill the talent of existing employees. With the corona pandemic raging, an ABC News poll published last week said that 77% of people said their lives have been disrupted and 70% of people reported experiencing stress. Next slide, please. To manage our stress effectively, we need to understand the stress response cycle. Hundreds of thousands of years ago, when we were hunter-gatherers, stress was a response to a physical stressor. If there was a lion or enemy, 
or a saber tooth tiger that was about to get us, our response, our stress response cycle was activated. The first immediate response was fight or flight. That was instantaneous and unconscious. Our rational brains did not have time to think. Hormones were released into our bodies and for survival, we had to immediately respond. Our physical response was that our pupils would dilate so we could scan the horizon, the muscles in our bodies tensed, our breathing became more rapid so we can get more oxygen and our heartbeat increased. Our fight or flight physical response jacked up our muscles so we could save ourselves by moving. We had to get away from the threat. Today, we still have this unconscious physical fight or flight response. Our bodies can't tell the difference between a lion or a stressor at work. We have the same physical response in our bodies. Everyone responds to stressors differently. There are four common types of stress personalities. Next slide, please. The first type of stress personality is the strivers. They have type A personalities. They're very competitive and they want to win and succeed. They are hard charging and move at a fast pace. There is no slow in their vocabulary. Strivers are always climbing to the top of the achievement ladder. They measure success by accomplishments and status. They can come across as very demanding and aggressive in the workplace. They are impatient and want to control everything. Coworkers may feel like strivers will, feel, will step on anyone to reach their goals. Strivers can be viewed as toxic coworkers. Often, the striver doesn't feel the joy of achievement when they reach a goal. They are off to achieve the next goal. Strivers can get angry when they feel a loss of control in their work environment. Under stress, strivers can experience burnout. Next slide, please. Next in the lineup are pleasers. Pleasers want everyone to be happy with their work. They thrive in a friendly work environment. They are very pleasant, likable, and cooperative. They go along to get along. Pleasers appear to be the ultimate team players. They are always accommodating the desires of their coworkers. They dislike conflict. Pleasers have a difficult time speaking up and being assertive. Their coworkers and managers may never know their true opinions. Pleasers bottle up their true emotions. And under stress, pleasers can feel resentful and angry because they believe their coworkers are taking advantage of their cooperativeness. Next slide, please. Critical judges tend to be perfectionists. They are analytical and very thorough. Nothing is ever good enough for the critical judges. They redo assignments many times and are always burning the midnight oil to complete assignments. The critical judges are tough graders. They don't take time to celebrate their wins. They view failure as something that will damage their career. It's hard for them to view failure as a learning experience. Under stress, critical judges can become highly critical of themselves, coworkers, and the organization. Next slide, please. The last stress personality type is the worriers. To be happy in their work environment, workers need a lot, worriers need a lot of clarity. They need clear outlines of roles, responsibilities, and goals. They also need an agreement on how the work should be done. Warriors like to check in frequently with their managers. They are always worried about what if scenarios. They dislike a work environment with constantly changing priorities. Chaotic work environments and ambiguity create stress for warriors. Under stress, they will engage in negative thoughts and worry that things will not be done on time with the correct outcomes. It is important to understand our stress personality. Are we a striver, a pleaser, critical judge, or worrier? Perhaps we are a mixture of the stress personalities. We also need to understand the stress personality of our coworkers. Many times we personalize the behavior of other people. Often their behavior is not about us, it is about their internal thoughts. It's how they are responding to a stressor in the workplace. Next slide, please. Managers have the responsibility to help employees reduce stress in the workplace. Normally, daily huddles are used to connect with the hourly workforce. One-on-one -on -one meetings are a great tool for connecting with salaried workers. Ideally, every week, a manager will spend at least 15 minutes of one-on-one -on -one time with each salaried employee. 
Many times managers tell me they don't have time for these meetings. I ask them to think about it as an investment. Next slide, please. The 15 minute investment can increase an employee's productivity by at least 10% or the equivalent of four additional hours of work completed by the employee every week. That's a pretty good return on investment. The one-on-one -on -one meeting can be done by video chat or face-to-face. -face. During the corona pandemic, it's really important to use this practice as we follow the stay-at-home order. More than 25% of the U.S. population lives alone. Many of your employees may be at home alone. Most of their social interaction may have occurred in the workplace. According to Cigna, remote workers are more likely than non-remote workers to always or sometimes feel alone. Lonely coworkers say they are less engaged and less productive at work. The one-on-one -on -one meetings can help employees thrive. As you adopt this practice, I recommend letting your employees know that you are available for one-on-one -on -one meetings, to create shared ownership of the meetings, ask your employees to send the meeting invitation, explain that you would be interested in covering some of the following areas, celebrating their wins, aligning goals and priorities, evaluating their workload, identifying obstacles, and assessing teamwork. Here are some questions that you could ask employees during the one-on-one -on -one meetings. The first group of questions, what was your biggest success over the last week? Why do you think this was successful? How do you feel about the win? And of course, we would follow that up by praising their strengths and wins and letting them know that we appreciate their results and having them on the team. If the employee didn't have a win, we can talk about what were the key learnings from any setback that they may have. Second question we could ask, in your opinion, what are the goals and priorities for the next period of work? Third question could be, do you feel this workload and deadlines are achievable? Fourth question, do you see any obstacles that will prevent you from reaching your goals? A fifth question could be, do you feel you have enough control over your work and the decisions that are impacting your work? And finally, number six, do you have the proper support from the people in the organization that you need to interact with to accomplish your goals? At the end of the conversation, we can ask the employee to summarize the action plans and document them in an email, then thank the employee for the meeting. I know, again, a lot of times managers say, I don't have time for these, and I ask them, please just try it at least once or twice and see how it goes for you. And every manager that I have had uh, do the one-on-one, -on -one, start them, say that they have, it has increased employee morale and productivity for them. So if you're not doing them, I would highly recommend that you do that. Spending focused time with, when employees spend focused time with the manager, it reduces stress for both the manager and the employee, and we can be sure that the right things are getting done in the right time. Sometimes we have to manage up. If you think you could benefit from, one of, from the one-on-one -on -one meetings and your manager has an offer to have them, Answer your manager for 15 minutes of their time for a quick check-in. At the end of the meeting, tell your manager how you benefit from the meeting, and then ask permission to establish a cadence for the one-on-one -on -one meetings. Next slide, please. Just as our managers have a responsibility to help reduce stress in the workplace, we can also take action. We aren't helpless. We can take back control of our minds and our bodies, we can choose to be different. There are three different types of things that everyone can do to manage stress. One is imagery, mindfulness is the second one, and the third one is positive self-talk. Let's explore each one of these actions we can implement to manage our stress in the workplace. Next slide, please. Our minds are a powerful tool. We can imagine ourselves in relaxing situations. We can think of a place that makes us happy, we can close our eyes and transport ourselves to our happy place. It could be the beach, the mountains, or the forest. We can hear the sounds, smell the smells, and feel the tactile sensations. We should make this a daily practice at work. We can pick our time that works best for us. It could be first thing in the morning, perhaps lunchtime, mid-afternoon. And if we think we're going to have a stressful meeting, we can arrive at the meeting early and sit in the room and transport ourselves to our relaxing place 
to calm ourselves and deal with the stress and have it help us in a positive way. Next slide, please. We wanna get a little practice. So now we're going to practice your imagery scene. So I'm gonna ask everyone to please close your eyes, go to your relaxing place, look around and take in the landscape. How does the environment feel? What sounds do you hear? What do you feel under your feet? What do you smell? Smile and take in the sights. Continue looking around and feeling the calm of your relaxing place. Now slowly open your eyes. Hopefully that was a joyful experience, something that you can quickly do at work. Next slide, please. The next technique that we can practice at work is mindfulness. Mindfulness is about being fully present in the moment. We can practice mindfulness. When we do, we narrow our focus to the present moment. We can do two really simple mindfulness techniques at work. The first mindful technique is listening to relaxing music. We should identify our favorite song in the range of 60 to 90 beats per minute. This falls in the resting heart rate range for many adults. This type of music is played in wellness balls. And believe me, before our webinar, I listen to my uh, music at around the 60 beats per minute area. At work, we can put in our earbuds and close our eyes and listen for two minutes. Everyone probably has two minutes that they can have that they can spare. So that's something we can do at work. The second mindfulness technique that we can practice at work is to focus on our breathing. We can focus on slowing our breathing because we know under stress that our breathing does increase. So let's practice that right now. Please close your eyes. Sit up right. Place both feet comfortably on the floor. Lift your arms above your head and slowly bring them down. Place them on your thighs. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Hold, breathe out through your mouth. Take another deep breath in through the nose. Hold. Breathe out through the mouth. Now slowly open your eyes and breathe normally. I hope you feel a bit calmer. Do this whenever you're feeling stress. Next slide, please. The third technique we can use to manage stress at work is to engage in positive self-talk and give up our negative thoughts. We need a steady stream of positive thoughts. We can have mantras such as, this too shall pass, or what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. We need to remain optimistic and we can identify what is inside of our circle of control and focus on those things. We need to focus on the opportunity to change the things we can, and we certainly can control our thoughts. Let's review some examples regarding the two most common stressors in the workplace. Next slide, please. The first is self-talk around, work around workload. Let's say that you just realized that your department is going to be short-staffed at work. You could engage in negative self-talk and that creates stress. We could say, oh brother, what a day this will be. It's gonna be hell. I'll never get it all done. It'll be exhausting. We're gonna stop ourselves in our tracks on those negative thoughts. We can do a little bit of deep breathing and then think positive thoughts. We're gonna change our thinking about the situation. The day should be very productive. I'll get a lot accomplished today. I'll earn a good night's sleep. I can achieve my goals. It's about changing our thoughts to manage our stress. Next slide, please. The second common stressor at work is people issues. Maybe you are having difficulty with a superior at work. Remember, they are human and people too. They also have a stressed personality. 
Some typical thoughts may be as we go negative, I hate this person, he makes me feel stupid, we're never gonna get along. Again, we're gonna get control of our thoughts, we can do some deep breathing and then reframe it. We can think positive thoughts. It will take some effort to get along. I'm in control of my reactions and my emotions. We have to always remember we can change our perspective. Changing our perspective can help us reduce stress in the workplace. Whatever we believe, it is. Next slide, please. In conclusion, we discuss common stressors in the workplace, the stress response cycle, stress personalities, and stress management techniques in the workplace. I would be happy to answer your questions. Great, thanks so much, Francine. And as a reminder to all the participants, uh, please feel free to ask your questions in either the Q&A function or in the webinar chat, and we'll be happy to get to as many as possible. Uh, to start out, um, among the strivers, pleasers, critical judges, and worriers, are certain types more likely to contribute to overall stress in the workplace? The ones that perhaps may um, contribute to the stress of other people most may be the strivers because they may come across as not being a team player. And when we're working today, teaming is really important. And so it's really important for strivers to get feedback from others in the workplace on where they may need to tone it down and make sure that they are coming across as a team player and focused on team goals. Great, thanks. Okay, and what are some of the more unique or unconventional methods for dealing with stress that you've seen to be effective? In, in the workplace? Yes, or yes, I think in um, workplace or in personal life. So what I, I'll, I'll take it to the workplace and I don't know that it's unconventional, it's just that we need to practice it more. It's that one, from a, a manager's perspective, they should always make sure that they're coaching their employees, that we have feedback that's honest, we're having open conversations and it's timely. When we do that, if someone is, is causing another person stress in the workplace, we can address those behaviors. And if we see that our employee is stressed at work, we just have to make sure that we have the conversation. And then a second thing that I would say for, uh, for employees is that some of the unconventional things are that some employers are starting to bring in maybe yoga into the workplace. They may have some mindfulness. I have seen some organizations that may have a basketball or a volleyball court where you can play foosball, but they're bringing things in where employees can take a pause in their day. Stress does activate us in a physical way where people can relieve some of that stress. Great, thanks. Okay, and so we have a question about working from home. Um, some managers are currently not responding to emails. Um, so it's making the person feel unnecessary and not, a, not part of the team. Do you have recommendations for how someone that's working from home and not getting responses from their team, what they could do? Right, so if they are responding to emails, would we be able to call them on their phone and just say, hey, just wanted to uh, check in and chat and here's where I need your help. Um, uh, and, and if the employee or the manager is not responding, what we have to think of, maybe we have an employee that is really stressed out. And so what, you know, how do we uh, continue if email's not working? How do we have that phone call with them? Great. Okay. And, and the other thing I was going to say, and again, if you know your employees, if that employee lives alone, then maybe we think we should think about, or right, if we haven't heard from them in two or three days, maybe there's some wellness check that we need to have done. Great, thank you. Okay, are there times when stress can be a good thing? Is there such a thing as good stress? Oh, oh, absolutely. So as we're looking at that our emotions have been amped up, 
We, if we're public speaking, we can learn how to teach our butterflies to fly into formation to help us get excited and channel our passion in the right way. And if we do have stress, if we can get that emotional response under control, when we flip our thinking to that positive, we have this energy and now we're gonna use that to get work done. So absolutely stress uh, can be a very positive thing. And there is uh, some research uh, that is out that what it talks about is that it's how we view stress. If we view stress as something negative and um, then it people, when they looked at them over a five to 10 year period, those people that view stress as negative were the ones that were more than likely to have some illness because of long-term stress or they could have died. And people that looked at stress as a positive way, understanding that it's a part of life and something that I can use my passion to get something done, those people were the ones that thrived and it did not have, they did not experience illnesses because of the stress. Great, that's so interesting. Okay, we just have a few more questions for you. Um, so is there a way that managers can better understand or quantify how stressed out their staff is, especially as we're all working from home? So as we're all working from home, it, it, it goes back to those one-on-ones. And if you can use Zoom, I think it, there's been an explosion in that, or if you have FaceTime, if you have Teams, some video chat, I would really encourage that one-on-one -on -one check in and do it as a video chat. And uh, at the end of the webinar, I know it's going to be recorded and when it's sent out, we're going to make sure that everyone gets an infographic of those one-on-one -on -one meetings and, and some questions that you can ask your employees. So it's just checking in and, and, and asking people how they're doing. Great, thank you. And your last question, do you just have any um, you know, last words you'd like to share with everyone that they can take back to their teams as far as how to best manage stress in the workplace? Yes, focus on the, um, make sure that we focus on the positive. And I know that we have our stay at home order. I believe we can still go out and take a quick walk. So uh, exercise is really key. So if you can go out, if you don't have a way to exercise or walk in your home, you can just walk around your um, dining room, living room or kitchen, your apartment, uh, go out and take a, a quick 30 minute walk uh, in your neighborhood using that six, dis that six feet distance, foot distance that you're staying away from people, but exercise sleep is really important and and making sure that we stay positive great thank you so much francine for taking the time to lead us through this important discussion on stress really appreciate it um, if you liked this important i'm sorry if you like this webinar join us next wednesday april 8th at 10 a.m um, illinois biz will join us to focus on actions to take to support your organizational culture during the covid 19 pandemic so we're going to continue our weekly webinar series and the Chamber remains committed to providing our members and the business community the advocacy, tools, and trainings needed to help your organization compete and recover. If you aren't a member yet, there are many benefits available to your company and your employees when you join the Chamber, one of which is 50% off customized trainings from our partner, Illinois Biz, for our employee training program, which is funded through the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity. Please contact me at kroadman at chicagolandchamber.org for more information. Finally, the Chamber will continue to bring you up-to-date guidance about COVID-19, including the impact to the business community and resources that are available for your organization. Please visit our website at chicagolandchamber.org for more information. And thanks again to all the participants who joined us today, and we hope you can make it next week as well.